Welcome to the Avail Podcast, where we dig deep and talk about the art of leadership. My name is Virgil Sierra, and today we're sitting down with the one and only Sam Chan. Sam is an author, speaker, founder, visionary, and leader of leaders who has a passion for equipping leaders with resources and helping others succeed. Today, he'll be discussing his newest book release, How Leaders Create Chaos, and why they should. So, without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Avail podcast, where we talk about the art of leadership. I am so excited right now because we have the honor and privilege of having the one and only co-founder of Avail Leadership, Dr. Sam Chand. Sam, it's good to be here on the Avail podcast with you. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing wonderful and good to see you, Virgil. You do so much good stuff. You talk to so many people and God has used you so good. You, you're wired for this. You're natural. So thank you very, very much. Well, I feel honored and blessed to be a part of this team, uh, Sam, and I am so excited. I'm excited for all of our Avail audience because they're always leaning in. Every Tuesday, a new Avail podcast episode pops out with great leaders talking about great leadership skills, resources, life, leading well in church, leading well in ministry, in the marketplace, leading ourselves, leading our families. I'm excited, Sam. I'm excited. Uh, Today, we're going to be specifically talking about your newest baby, your newest book, How Leaders Create Chaos and Why They Should. But right before we jump into that conversation, I would just love for everybody to hear from you as co-founder of Avail. Why does equipping leaders excite and impassion you? Well, I think that is God's plan. We are just doing, just following the dictates of Jesus. You know, he said, go into the, all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples, baptize, <laughs> grow the church. And you can't do that without leaders. Uh, you, you know, we found out in our centuries ago that a lot of people will get saved at uh, big crusades and so on and so forth. But if there's no leadership left behind to carry yeah. on. So what, is, what did Jesus do when he was on this planet? The first thing he did was to create his first cohort. Let's call him that. You know, <laughs> we, we call them the 12 disciples. Then let's call them his first leadership cohort. And for three, three and a half years, he poured himself into that. And because of uh, his uh, creating the leadership structure that he did and the way of thinking and uh, and the values. Uh, we are here today. I mean, the church is here today because Jesus raised his cohort group mm-hmm. leadership. So I'm just trying to follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior. And I'm just all excited about the opportunity that we have, you have, I have, to raise leaders worldwide. And who would have thought, but here we are, and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, I agree with that. I am following Jesus just like you, but I'm also following your lead. And so many of us here that follow Avail are following great men and women that have been leading longer than us and uh, and doing a great job. Uh, appreciate you, Sam, and excited at the, to see how God is using you in this season of your life. And the new book is out. The new book is out. I know that this had been cooking in you. Uh, in, in the last year, in the last months, it's been cooking in you. Um, you had given me a few little comments about it along the journey, how leaders create chaos and why they should. Let me just mention the book is out, the study guide is out, and the masterclass videos are out. We'll talk about that a little bit ahead, but why don't we just open up with with why? Can you share with us? I, it always intrigues me, Sam, to to hear the story of how books kind of are birthed in your in your heart and in your mind why this book what's the heart behind it so our mutual friend martijn van tilborg who's the ceo of our companies uh was speaking at a wedding actually it was his son andrew's wedding and you were there that's uh, right Andrew's wedding in Orlando, and we are in the uh, very, very unusual space. Uh, the wedding was in a, in a <laughs> parking deck, in a parking deck, you know. It was crazy, so, but it was beautiful. It was really, really good, and, and I'm really leaning into it. So the uh, Andrew and his wife, Robin, are sitting there in the middle, 
They had chairs all the way surrounding it. And I'm sitting on, you know, I'm sitting in two, three rows back there. And Martin is speaking a blessing over his son and future daughter-in-law. And in course of that conversation, Martin starts saying things like, I did this and I did that. And, you know, I started seven churches and I was a missionary in South Africa. And I came to America with nothing. And I started this company. I mean, he's talking about all of that. And when he started talking like that, all of a sudden, my mind went to, you know, we all start off like that. Mm -hmm. We all start off with big vision. We all start off with uh, what I call a roar of a lion. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 we start off uh, when we uh, plant a church, we're going to turn the world upside down. When we start a business, we're going to dominate the market. I mean, we, we, nobody starts out by saying, listen, I'm just going to be an average pastor with an average church, with an average mm. congregation, with average income, doing average missions. Nobody does that. Everybody's trying to be above and beyond. And as Martin was talking in the, in the, vid, uh, in the wedding, my, a thought came to me that all of us start like that, but then life happens. Hmm. Situations happen. Uh, distress happens. Scarcity happens. Uh, people push back on our ideas happen. Facilities don't materialize as quickly. And they start chipping away at the lion. And if I give a picture, what I start seeing in my head at that sitting at that wedding was that we start whatever you started, whoever is listening to me right now, mm -hmm. you started as a lion. But then life has a way of taming you. <laughs> and you become just an overgrown house cat. So instead of a roar, you have a meow. <laughs> so... What I did was I pulled up my my phone right then at the at the wedding. I pulled out my phone <laughs> and I started writing these ideas on my phone that ended up being this book. And the title of the book is, I think, says it all. And the title of the book is How Leaders Create Chaos and Why They wow. Should. Wow, I love that. I love, I love, you know, you 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 write it right at the beginning of the book that that you believe that lions are the best metaphor for exemplary leadership with that illustration you just gave us and as i think about people that i've seen as i've heard stories and watch what's going on around me and even kind of evaluate myself i can see that i can see how we can start off like lions that are ready to take over you know take it over and go uh, and over time because of the challenges that arise we can be tamed, tamed down to uh, to just an overgrown house cat. Now, this this I remember this idea. That, I remember that from my own life, just like you. You know, uh -huh. when I was twenty eight, starting to pastor this church in a little town in rural Michigan, and I mean, I went there just ready to charge. <laughs> but then I went to my first board meeting <laughs> and got turned down for a five dollar a month proposal. <laughs> and then I wanted to shift uh, the tenor of the service a little bit and I got slapped down on that and then I wanted to choose uh, some uh, we call them choruses in those days chorus uh -huh. and the chorus was uh, what we call worship songs now uh, uh -huh. basically songs that are not in the church hymnal and, and, and we're on the overhead transparency. Now, many of you listening to me right now need to Google. You You really, you live an unfulfilled life unless you Google as to what an overhead transparency looks like. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting beat up on all of those things. And then pretty soon you learn, you know, uh, what not to do to keep the church folk happy. And I know many of you listening to me right now are saying to yourself, that's exactly where I'm at. That's exactly where I'm at. I was born to be a lion. Hmm. I was born to roar. I was born to dominate. A lion doesn't take sides. A lion takes over. When a lion shows up, everything else scatters. Uh -huh. Except other lions. And then even then, lions fight among themselves. So you were born to be a lion. And this book will help you discover what happened and how can you can regain your role. 
<laughs> I like that. I like that. You know, I think a natural tendency that most human beings have, all of us leaders usually have, is a desire for stability because the idea is if things are stable, then nobody's rocking the boat, then we're safe, right? But in your book, your new book, you propose that leaders creating chaos really isn't a bad thing necessarily. And and so here's my question to you. How do leaders create chaos and how is that a good thing? Leaders cre- create chaos when picking up on what you just said, Virgil, when they lead people from the known to the unknown. Wow. From the certain to the uncertain. Now, that's very biblical. That's very biblical. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, you pick up any character, any character you want to pick up in the Bible. Mm -hmm. God is always moving people from the known to the unknown. Mm -hmm. From the certain to the uh, uncertain. Uncertain. However, the way we are wired is we like to go from the unknown (laughs) to the known. From the uncertain to the certain. Yeah. So whenever you move people, even yourself, you know, the Bible is replete with examples which help us to understand that this uh-huh. is nothing new. We are always uh, moving ourselves and people into the unknown. And here we are, here we are talking about how do we how do we make peace with that? I think the first place you make peace with is yourself. Because if you have that tendency, which all of us do, all of us do, I do, you do, everybody does, to move from the uncertain to the certain.